Our shocking trillion-dollar deficit as a sign of spending has gone wild. The American people have underestimated the ability of politicians to slip things through when we are not looking. While many voters had their attention focused on the impeachment circus Washington has again unleashed the purse strings. Last time the diversion was a disagreement on funding the wall that distracted us, this time it is impeachment, the trade war and the Fed dealing with a liquidity crisis. The important point is that Washington has again diverted our eyes away from the over-the-top spending taking place. Sadly, this writer had a difficult time getting spending details even after an extensive search of the news and recent articles about what is planned. It appears everyone came together and simply agreed on, I will support your spending if you support mine. The fact remains that while both the Republicans and the Democrats mumble about being dissatisfied over the deficit, this pork-packed bill will rapidly be signed into law. Calling this a bipartisan agreement helps spread the blame around and masks just how dysfunctional Washington has become. Of course, those we have sent to Washington can fall back on the stand that it was all done in order to avert another shutdown that would damage the economy. The real bonus is it will allow all the players involved to take their victory laps and claim democracy works. Digging around you will find the massive $738 billion defense spending bill passed with a vote of 86 to 8 in the Senate after clearing the House last week. This bill includes a high-profile deal that grants federal employees 12 weeks of paid parental leave in exchange for creating Trump's Space Force, which will be granted a measly $40 million. The administration said it expects the newly established Space Force to burn through $8 billion over the next five years. A close look at the economy reveals it is only this massive and unsustainable deficit spending that continues driving our economy forward. The 2017 tax cuts have not panned out the way Republicans promised when they slashed corporate and income taxes. While we were told tax reform would mark a major shift in companies causing them to bring jobs back to America that may not happen. The structural issues that haunt America's competitiveness far outweigh the benefits brought forth from the tax bill and lower taxes. The ugly truth is American companies have little reason to bring jobs home and the budget deficit is set to widen significantly in the next few years even with healthy economic growth. According to projections from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, this means the national debt which now tops $23 trillion will soar to more than $33 trillion in 2028. We are looking at a trillion-dollar deficit. This translates into America spending $3,333 more than it takes in for every man, woman, and child in the country. To clarify, this is each year and every year but also fails to include state and local deficits as well as a slew of off-book promises and spending that are also being made. This spells big problems going forward if we do not begin to face up to reality and get in front of our problems we will soon find ourselves solidly behind the eight ball. Welcome back to The Survival Economist. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. It would be wise not to accept America's recent GDP as verification the economy is hitting on all cylinders. In 1962 Kuznets, the father of the GDP formula emphasized that we must keep in mind the difference between quantity and the quality of growth. While economic growth appears robust and a solid GDP number can result in a feel-good moment building consumer confidence it can also mask growing weakness in various parts of the economy. Quantity simply does not make up for poor quality, we are talking about two different animals. The false narrative that simply growing the size of an economy by adding more people into the mix or using deficit spending undercuts the importance of a solid economic and the long-term stability of the financial system. History shows government spending is a poor substitute for the free market when it comes to allocating capital to where it is most effective instead it creates a false economy by borrowing from the future. Deficit spending is not a silver bullet without consequences. The president's fixation on the stock market and not the real economy represented by Main Street does a great disservice to Americans. Corporate investment decisions are based upon the cost of capital and the prospective equity returns that new investment can generate, not how much capital is available and in our current cheap and easy money, environment capital is basically free. The problem is not funding new investments, but finding endeavors in which to deploy this capital. 
The economists who largely control the major central banks in the industrialized nations may be able to manipulate markets and cancel excessive debt through open market operations, but they cannot manufacture attractive investments. This is why stock buybacks have become a corporate priority joining other investments that are not productive. The deficit spending propping up our economy has gone far past anything we might have envisioned just a decade ago and the path forward appears challenging. Auto sales have fallen and companies are cutting the number of cars they will manufacture in North America. Housing also is a problem with much of the construction now flowing into high-end apartments rather than affordable units. This is the result of government policy and laws that discourage anyone from wanting to invest or deal with low-income housing. These are two big sectors of our economy but even they have become tired. Indirectly this deficit spending by our government also fuels our trade deficit. This is not only evident by our massive trade deficit with Asia but the United States' huge trade deficit with Mexico which becomes even more disturbing when you begin to understand even that money quickly passes through Mexico and flows to Asia. It could be argued that when all is said and done we are still transferring our wealth to the Far East only by the scenic route. The idea we will reach a quick fix to the trade problems facing America and is a myth and oversimplifies the problems before us in achieving a sustainable trade balance. Reaching a reasonable solution posses a major difficulty in that China is so entrenched in its ideology it most likely will refuse any change that will throttle back its plans of domination. The bottom line is that Washington has become a hostile and unfriendly environment for those interested in good governance. In June a balanced budget plan put forward by Senator Rand Paul, R. Key, failed in the Senate by a vote of 69 to 22. This means only 22 of the 53 Republicans voted in favor of the national debt addressing measure. For the first two months of the fiscal year, which began October 1, the deficit grew to $343 billion. The national debt clock showed the U.S. owed more than $23 trillion as of Thursday. The crux of this post is to point out deficit spending is not a silver bullet, it has real consequences and with each step forward we get closer to the end of the road. While those embracing modern monetary theory may argue otherwise Econ 101 teaches that such actions always lead to a very bad place. There is no solution to a fiat currency system that must grow geometrically in order to continue to make the interest on the past fiat debt payable. If the growth in the fiat currency supply were to slow down let alone end or worse reverse, many debts nationally and internationally would default resulting in worldwide Great Depression. As a result the promises of future purchasing power held in these various forms of IOUs just vanishes into thin air. The world was set on this path once our money system was disconnected from the limits of the real world. Like two tectonic plates building up strain between themselves. This strain energy will be released at some future point in the form of an earthquake. The longer this strain builds the greater that future energy release will be and the smaller the random event that kicks it off will be. The realignment will occur via two complementary but opposite forces. The first force will be deflation and default in everything you own or are owed, especially assets that increased in value due to the overexpansion of easy money and other forms of leverage. The second force will be inflation in everything you plan to purchase in the future with what you incorrectly thought was wealth now largely gone in purchasing power terms. This inflation is largely brought about the government's attempt to retain its sugar daddy status and thus remain in power, i.e. money for the people, and backfill the currency loss of these assets, like pension funds etc. It's simply an acceleration in the new currency that even now helps to keep bubble asset prices growing. The period of time we find ourselves in now. As always those that get this new currency first benefit the most at the determent of vast majority. The only way to limit your exposure to these wealth destruction forces is to hold your wealth in real things and not IOUs or bubble assets. Real things, like self-sufficiency and easy to store things you'll need in the future anyway. Once you have maxed these out, put the rest into, physical gold, not to be confused with ETFs which are legally just another paper IOU. If you want, having a few chips in the casino is not bad idea as it's anyone's guess as to how long this Ponzi scheme can go on. Just remember to maintain your ratio of real wealth to casino wealth. In this way if say your casino wealth doubles, maintaining that ratio will cause you to sell some of that casino wealth periodically and place it into real wealth. These bubbles can go on a lot longer than you think, and while they are running, they are a great way to build up your real wealth. Real wealth, like physical gold, 
doesn't grow like casino wealth, it just sits there like seeds unplanted just waiting for the right time. All good things come to an end though. The failure of the present monetary system will simple bring about the next one. Over and over again the next monetary system restores balance with the physical world by utilizing physical gold as its primary reference point for all other things of value, including the new currency. Why physical gold? Because throughout history it's been produced and yet not consumed and thus just accumulates. It's also not needed for anything important, like food and energy that are produced in order to be consumed and thus gold's price can be entirely arbitrary without affecting the lives of the common man or commerce, like the doubling the real price of food for example. Gold is just a simple counterbalance and reference point within the currency system that enables the flow of real things of value throughout the complex and dynamic supply chain. Of all 92 elements to choose from, gold possess the best physical representation of the concept of money. This was the survival economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.